Gavin in Australia, down under. Wish I could do an Australian accent. You know what cracks me up? I'm sorry, here I go, <laughs> already off on a tangent. In Australia, when they speak to each other, it sounds normal, and we sound like we have an accent, and the opposite is true here, and that always, I don't know, that, that just, that always boggles my mind, but in any case, I love the Australian folks. Everybody down under has, is so friendly. Um, anyway, Gavin writes to me, I currently own a pair of Kef 104.2 that I don't mind at all. I bet not, Kef makes some great speakers. But for my next project, I want to build something better. At least, I'd like to try to. My question is whether a subwoofer needs to be a dedicated box, or if it is possible, could it be built into the speaker itself? Or is the size of the speaker an issue? I love your videos. They have been, driving for, been a driving force behind my late blooming passion for audio, and I always find something interesting in your back catalog of vids. Cheers, Gav. Why, thank you, sir. Um, of course, subwoofers can be built into speakers. Sandy Gross, my buddy over at, uh, he used to be at Def Tech, and then he did Golden Ear. He was a big proponent of building subwoofers. And when I was at Genesis with, with Arnie, we built subwoofers into the Gen 3s, into, oh gosh, um, I don't remember all the model numbers that we had, but yeah, we built subwoofers in. But there's a problem with building a subwoofer in, and that very simply is that where the best place to put a pair of speakers, a mid-range tweeter uh, and woofer, where that is in the room isn't necessarily and isn't likely to be the best place to put bass, okay? So in the Audiophiles Guide, which is a, is a book that I, I have written, uh, I walk you through how to find the best place for bass. And, and there's a ton of different methods to do that, but one of the methods that I talk about in the book is instead of trying to move the speakers around for a fixed seating position, it's better to move the seating position around for a fixed position of speakers. So imagine that you now have your speakers set up and they're a third the way into the room or you've got them as far out from the rear wall as, you, as, as it feels right. Enough room to create a sound stage behind the speakers, right? So you've got that and you're gonna, you're gonna tow them in just a little bit. We don't like a lot of tow in if we're gonna have imaging and depth and sound stage. Now you're gonna walk around the room and find the best place for bass and boom, that's where your seat goes, okay? Great advice. It is likely, in fact, it will inevitably not be perfect because bass, and we've talked about this before, it's very difficult to propagate in the room. So now the best thing to do is to have a separate subwoofer, if you can, place that subwoofer in that seating position and point it at where the speakers are. Then, as you're playing, walk around behind your speakers and find the best place where that bass sounds great, and then swap them. Put your subwoofer back there. Then, when you go sit in your listening position, not only will you have great imaging, great bass, but now you're also going to have the reinforcement of the subwoofer in the proper place. But that only happens if you have a separate sub. Now, our new FR30 speakers, which we've talked a lot about, they have not a subwoofer built in, but they will extend down very low in frequency, probably hit easy 30 hertz, a, a true 30 hertz in the room. But they too are not going to be perfect because of this very same problem, that the perfect place for the FR30 speakers that we'll come out with will be here, you're going to move your position to take advantage of the best base and imaging that you can for a given space, but you could still do with a separate sub. Just physics and the facts of life. All right? I hope that helps. Thanks. I'll talk to you tomorrow.